Hey folks, good morning and welcome to another episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. This morning we're going to be riding Yamaha's 2021 YZF R1M Superbike. That's right, Yamaha's top shelf leader class Superbike is going for a spin today. So let's throw the helmet on and go for a ride. Well folks, there it is, Yamaha's 2021 YZF R1M. This is Yamaha's top of the line leader class superbike. Now, to really understand the R1M, we have to go back to the original 1998 R1. That's when Yamaha started manufacturing these sport bikes. 23 years later, we have the 2021 YZF R1M. The R1M stands out in the R1 pedigree by its use of all carbon fiber bodywork, even the tail. It also comes with Yamaha's GPS data acquisition system, which is on top of the rear seat cowl. Yamaha also includes standard traditional passenger seat cowl too when you purchase this motorcycle. And it also has Olean's fantastic semi-active suspension. So the suspension automatically adjusts the fork and shock damping in real time based on vehicle input that it receives from the brake lever, from the throttle, and from that kind of stuff, and the IMU, of course, which gives the motorcycle positional awareness. So all these things power the Olean suspension and allow it to have near-perfect damping based on your riding. This motorcycle costs about $8,000 more than the standard R1, $26,100 for this 2021 YZF R1M. But geez, look at it. It is absolutely beautiful. Look at that full carbon fiber bodywork. Those cast magnesium wheels, they are so light. This motorcycle is very aesthetically appealing. I like how Yamaha recessed the rear view mirrors into the fairing for 2020. That was a 2020 change. This 2021 model is a carryover, so it is identical to the 2020 model, except for the VIN number. So enough talking about this bike. Let's swing a leg over and see what it's like to ride. All right, folks, here we are on Yamaha's 2021 YZF R1M and a good old-fashioned mechanical key. Yamaha has been using this style key for as long as I can remember, well over a decade. Thank you, Yamaha. I love a mechanical key. Let's thumb the starter and get on the road. Ooh, I love the sound of this bike. And away we go. <clears throat> Seated at the controls of this R1M, well, it's a sport bike. The seat is tall, the clip-on style handlebar is low, and the rear sets are high. This motorcycle is made for the racetrack. Now, when Yamaha came out with this motorcycle, with this platform motorcycle, for the 2015 model year, they had changed their direction. So the 2009 through 2014 YZF R1 was a road focused sport bike. It was wide, it was comfy, it kicked off a lot of engine heat, which was nice for riding in the winter time, but it wasn't such a good track bike. This is such a good track bike. Yamaha reversed its course and wanted to go with a really racy machine. And that's where we're at with this 2021 YZF R1M. The ergonomics are pretty aggressive. They're not the most aggressive in a sport bike we've ever ridden, but definitely more aggressive than most sport bikes these days. The rear sets for this motorcycle are non-adjustable. The previous 20, 2009 to 2014 Yamaha R1, you could actually adjust the rider rear sets. These are fixed. So if you're a person who is 
very flexible and young, you're gonna like the ergonomics on this bike. If you are a little bit older and stiff, stiffer, you're gonna not like the ergonomics on, on these motorcycle, on this motorcycle. What's important to remember, this bike is made for track use. It's made for being in the tuck position. Street riding is not its forte. But still at the same time, I do like this tall windscreen. This windscreen's nice and tall. You can tuck behind it very well when you're <clears throat> holding the throttle wide and it does a decent job of pushing wind up over the rider engine this ZF r R1M is powered by Yamaha's legendary CP4 engine Yamaha overhauled this engine configuration for the 2015 model year 998 cc displacement water cooled it employs Yamaha's also now signature cross plane crankshaft which they came out for the 2009 model year with now the cross plane crankshaft crankshaft gives the motorcycle an uneven firing interval so instead of the standard firing inter interval that most inline four engines use this one has a very unique engine firing order that gives it its signature growl now yamaha did that to make a motorcycle that has better traction so theoretically the the engine firing spaces out the the combustion stroke just enough to help the rear tire have more traction against the asphalt it, it has a very unique character it feels like a cross between the screen high rpm whale of an of a conventional inline four and the old school immediate torque and guttural roar of the v-twin sport bikes of yesteryear obviously no one makes a v-twin sport bike engine anymore but when they did those engines were awesome just for their unique character power wise this engine puts out right around 165 horsepower to the business end of the bridgestone batlax rs11 tire that is a pretty good amount of power now i remember in 2015 when we dynoed this motorcycle with the at the time the gytr track ecu this bike put out right around 180 horsepower so there's a lot of performance that's locked into this engine so kudos to yamaha for making a really bulletproof engine that can take a little bit of modifications to make more power now we're talking about durability for the 2020 model year, Yamaha did some fine tuning to the engine's lubrication and bottom end to try to enhance that durability. So that change was employed on all 2020 and of course 2021 R1s. All right, my favorite corner back road. Now with a full 4.5 gallons of fuel this motorcycle weighs 450 pounds so a couple pounds more than the previous r1 and lifting this bike off its side stand this bike has some heft to it but when you're riding with the wheels in motion it's actually a pretty maneuverable motorcycle speaking of the fuel tank this fuel tank is actually hand formed using aluminum in Japan. So a human being literally forms this tank by hand. It's a really nice, aesthetically pleasing fuel tank that actually doesn't weigh very much either. A lot of fuel tanks these days are made from steel. This thing's aluminum and it's nice and light. Suspension. The YZF R1M employs Olean's semi-active suspension with its new gas charged fork and the suspension on this motorcycle is just awesome the 
programming of the suspension has been updated as well and overall just the damping settings are just they're better than the first generation setup the suspension's able to modify damping based on rider control input and ro road surface conditions and it just it's really impressive to me how this motorcycle goes from mild to wild with just a few pushes of a button right now we're riding in road one mode which is the automatic dampening road setting God, i love this button and this road one setting gives a good balance between sport and comfort this bike in R1 isn't nearly as jolty or as jarring as a standard R1 is. And if you want the chassis to offer more sport performance, put it in T2 or conversely T1 mode, which really bumps up the, the damping. Of course, riders can also manually tune the suspension damping via a manual mode and Yamaha's slick interface and iPhone 5 size color TFT display allow you to work the settings let's show you how to do it real quick you hold down this multi-wheel button oh we gotta go we'll have to do it later guys away we go running this thing through the gears. Oh, sorry guys. I got carried away a little bit with the speed. I just love when you're mashing through the six-speed gearbox on this motorcycle. This bike is equipped with an electronic quick shifter, so you can upshift through the gearbox without having to use the clutch. Conversely, when you're during deacceleration, you don't have to use the clutch during downshifts either. You just let off the throttle and tap on the gear shift lever and it will downshift. Now, this feature is really nice when you're riding at the racetrack or on your favorite back road. The auto blip allows the rear tire to stay connected to the road. So that little split second that you pull in the clutch that unweights the suspension, unweights the tire, and creates instability. The electronic downshift system allows that rear tire to be connected to the pavement and hooked up at all the time, all times, and it just makes wailing on your motorcycle more fun uh, through twisty sets of roads when you have to downshift. Cruising at 74 miles per hour in top gear, this engine doesn't put off a lot of vibration. There's a little bit of buzz in there, but it's the good kind of buzz. It almost seems like Yamaha precisely tuned the character of the engine to give you some vibration to know you're riding a high performance motorcycle, but not to give the kind of vibration that's off-putting or just makes riding uncomfortable. So good job to Yamaha. Fuel mileage wise, even though the display says 24.3, that's because we did a track day on this motorcycle just a few days ago. But through around town riding and just normal riding, we've averaged right around 31, 32 miles per gallon. No doubt this motorcycle is thirsty. I love how nimble sport bikes are. You can just slide in between traffic and get into tight spots that you just couldn't get in and out of on another motorcycle. Cable actuated clutch has nice feel. It also has some weight to it. You don't need to have a He-Man size forearm to pull in the clutch, but it, it does have a little bit more resistance than other modern clutches but I like it I like this clutch a lot it has good feel we tried out Yamaha's launch control at the racetrack now launch control allows a more consistent start during a race or a competition event on track now 
this YZF-R1M is just loaded with electronics. And launch control, by when you enable launch control, it holds the RPM at 8,000 RPMs. So all you have to do is worry about releasing the clutch. Obviously, during a launch, you want to get that clutch out as soon as possible. If you're holding onto the clutch, you're not accelerating forward. And launch control allows you to focus all your mental energy on clutch release. In the old days, previous to launch control, you had to make sure you're holding the engine RPMs at a certain RPM. You, got, you had to make sure you didn't let the engine RPM get too low. You couldn't let it be too high or you'd start, you'd start wearing out your clutch prematurely. Launch control helps take one aspect of launches away and make it easier. Still, these motorcycles are high performance. There's a lot of going on, a lot going on very quick. And even with launch control, this motorcycle still is a little bit of a handful to launch. Still kudos to Yamaha for putting that technology in this bike. Yamaha offers combined power and throttle maps. So we're riding in power mode one, which is the most aggressive power setting. There's also a power mode two, three, and four. The higher the number, the more modest the power output is. Now, Yamaha did a very important change last year. They redesigned the throttle mechanism. So Yamaha R1 sport bikes have had ride-by-wire throttle since 2007. But with the 2015-2019 Gen R1, the throttle was always a little bit perky jerky, especially in power mode one. Well, this new throttle setup really smoothens out the power and makes the throttle response more accurate. I Now I love riding the motorcycle in power mode one, and it just has very good immediate feel without being twitchy. Now, another cool thing about this motorcycle is the ability to adjust all the traction control settings, slide control settings on the fly. There's eight levels of traction control integrated into this machine. We're in setting two right now. Slide control has two modes, level one, level two, and off. Now, slide control is basically traction control during power drifting. So, when the motorcycle when, when the motorcycle registers excessive wheel spin, in when the motorcycle has a degree of yaw to it, the power is pulled back. So there's no way that we're going to be able to ride the motorcycle hard enough on the street to even feel slide control, but it's still neat that Yamaha has it. On the racetrack is where those technologies really make a big difference. Yes, a straightaway! Now, this motorcycle also has wheelie control. Yamaha calls it lift control, and that reduces power to help keep the front wheel on the ground. Now, without lift control, the motorcycle would have wheelied crazy style back there, but because we have it in lift control setting two, which is the most aggressive setting, the motorcycle will not pull big wheelies. Of course, if you want to have a little bit more fun, you put it in level one, and if you want to disable it altogether, you can. Now, when Yamaha came out with its wheelie control in the 2015 R1, they were a little bit conservative in the programming. They've gone a little bit more aggressive, allowed a little bit less power cut when you're in level one in the least restrictive setting, which is a really nice touch for, for track day enthusiasts and racers that really want to uh, make every lap time count. Speaking of lap times, this YZF R1M has a telemetry system. Telemetry system allows you to monitor the analytics of the motorcycle post ride using your Android or iOS powered smartphone. Now, because this technology was developed six years ago, the actual interface is a little bit clunky. Just one area that could be improved on. Speaking of electronics and improvements, this color TFT display 
when this thing came out in 2015, it was awesome. It literally was the same size as my iPhone 5. Fast forward six years, and iPhone 5s don't even exist, and this display is just too small compared to modern displays like the 6.5 inch display on the Bavarian Superbike. There's a lot of information here. I like having the instant fuel economy. I like having all of the features and the, the brake pressure input and the, the, the balance of the bike when you're on the front or in the back. These lights illuminate that let you allow, allow you to know the pitch of the motorcycle. That stuff is all awesome. It's just very, very hard to see. This display needs to be larger. I do like the ability to adjust the wallpaper of this, this display. Right now we're riding in day mode. So white background, black fonts. If you're riding at night, you can also switch it to a black background with white fonts. Just like dark mode on your iPhone. I really like that setting a lot. But because we're riding with the camera, this setting shows up a little bit better than dark mode for whatever reason. I like this motorcycle because even though it is a high performance super bike, the mirrors still give you good visibility of what's going on behind you. The engine doesn't throw off an excessive amount of heat. With this Olean semi-active suspension, the motorcycle goes from wild to mild with just a few swipes of a button. And the LED headlamp. They are just so bright. I love riding this motorcycle at night. I can really see where I'm going. And because this motorcycle is so fast, because it is so high performance, you're going to want a very bright set of head beams on, on a bike like this. And Yamaha delivers. We spent a good amount of time riding this motorcycle at the track and that's where this bike really comes alive. I just love the whale of the engine. I love how connected I feel in terms of the vehicle throttle response, the suspension, the chassis. It just all works to make track riding not only extremely fun, but relatively easy. It almost seems like when you're riding this bike, you're on autopilot. It just does everything you want it, you want it to do. It's very forgiving and, and relatively easy to ride with the wide range of electronic adjustment. You can bump up the traction control to a high setting and the motorcycle just gives you a lot of confidence to ride it to that performance envelope. Of course, as you get more comfortable, as your skill increases, you can pull back the electronics and the, the threshold of this motorcycle, when you have the electronics in, in the very least restrictive setting, you need to be a very high level rider to really feel that the bike in action just because the, the electronic barrier is so high on this motorcycle. And again, with just a couple swipes of a button, you can tailor it to the way you like to ride. Triple disc hydraulic brakes keep speed check on the YZF R1M. ABS is always on, it's fixed, you cannot turn it off. Yamaha offers two different brake control modes. Level two has cornering ABS functionality built into it. Level one does not. Level one is actually the more aggressive brake setting, but for whatever reason, it does not have ABS programming in it. Now, the brakes on this motorcycle work decently well on the street, but because this bike now includes engine brake control, you can literally tune the freewheeling of the motorcycle as you're under deacceleration. Because the engine brake control works so well in level two and three, level three is the least amount of engine brake and level two is a little bit more, and level one, which we're riding on right now, is the same level of engine brake that Yamaha has always had. Because level two and level three allow the motorcycle to freewheel more, the front brakes actually fade 
when you're riding at the track or riding in a nice twisty back road. So it would be nice if Yamaha could upgrade the brake circuit on this motorcycle. I don't know what they have to do, whether it is redesigning the ABS circuit, putting on a higher specification cal set of calipers, a better master pump, but the front brakes are just, they're underperforming for this motorcycle when you're riding in engine brake mode two or three and you're getting after it at the racetrack or on your favorite back road. Well, folks, there it is. Yamaha's 2021 YZF-R1M. I really like this motorcycle from its looks. I mean, look at the appearance of it. It looks, to me, it looks just like Valentino Rossi's YZR-M1 MotoGP bike. Carbon fiber, draped in carbon fiber, that nice, machined, polished swing arm. The subtle accents of the silver and the blue this motorcycle is just totally awesome i love the power of it i love the handling i love the electronics package aside from the questionable performance of the brakes and the small or now small instrument panel those are my really only two gripes about this motorcycle. Brakes and instrument panel. Everything else on this bike I like a lot. Which is saying a lot. Because realistically this motorcycle is six years old now. Yes, Yamaha updated it for 2020. They did a nice, a bunch of nice modifications. But this is now more of an old modern superbike but it still performs with the best of them just because it was so far ahead of the competition when it came out all right folks let's do some q a real quick why would someone pick an r1m over an r1 unless you're a regular track rider isn't the r1 or r1s better suited for street riding great question yes and no we talked about the old lean semi-active Gen 2 suspension and this suspension really allows this motorcycle an extreme level of versatility. You want it to ride relatively cozy on the street, put it in R1. If you want it to be very firm and aggressive for wailing at the racetrack, put it in T2. This Olean's suspension really adds a degree of versatility to this bike and realistically this bike is actually a better street bike than the R1 standard just because it has those suspension components that go from mild to wild with a push of a button. I hope that answers the question. How often can you actually get get out of second gear on the street? Ha ha ha, very funny. Yes, leader class and above size super bikes are geared to the moon. You can easily break the speed limit in first gear but it is just so fun to run through the gearbox on these motorcycles just the sound the way they accelerate you feel like you're piloting an, an f-16 fighter jet are the ergonomics as cramped as the r6 well this motorcycle it's very well proportioned for a leader class superbike, but it is a small motorcycle. If you're over six foot tall, you are gonna be a little bit cramped on this motorcycle. It's not designed for huge people. But that said, it still has well proportioned ergonomics. So good job to Yamaha. This or the CBR? Wow, that's a really good question. Honestly, I've ridden both motorcycles and this YZF R1M can definitely hold its own against the CBR Triple R SP Fireblade. Realistically, to know which motorcycle would be faster or better, you would need to take it to a racetrack, put identical high grip tires on it, and have a motorcycle rider who really knows what he's doing fundamentally to put the bike through the paces and really 
be able to tell you which one is better. But this thing can definitely hold its own against the new CBR. This thing can hold its own against any new leader in a leader above sized superbike. There's no superbike made today that's just going to walk away from this bike. That's totally impossible. Is the R1 or an MT10 more fun to street ride every day? Well, I'd say the MT10. We did the MT10 a few months ago. Make sure to visit our website to read that review and watch that video. And for day-to-day -day riding, the MT10 is going to be better than this motorcycle just because it's more comfortable. Yet it still has that R1-like engine and acceleration and sound just in a much more comfortable package so for around town riding no doubt mt10 would be a better bike but still these are ones i mean just look at the shock and awe value like if you pull up somewhere on this bike dude people are gonna notice you look at that thing it just looks so awesome to me all right one more question how is it compared to the suzuki gsxr 1000 that's a great question I'm a big Jixxer 1000 guy. I've always liked Suzuki sport bikes. This thing is more technologically advanced than the Jixxer 1000. From the engine to the electronics to the chassis, it's a little bit sharper than the Jixxer. Not saying the Jixxer isn't awesome because it totally is, but this thing is still a little bit a cut above it. But again, to really dial in the nuances and see which bike is better in which areas you need to bring it to a racetrack put identical high grip tires on it and have a rider who really knows what they're doing give you a proper evaluation that's the only way that could happen all right folks that's a wrap from this mc commute on yami's 2021 yzfr1m make sure to surf on over to motorcyclistonline.com to see and read all of my content Give us a like if you like this video. Give it a thumbs down if you thought it was silly. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.